Hello friends, I am Dr. Aniket Pavnoji and you are watching Basic Chemistry. Welcome to the second video of Chemistry of Coordination Compounds. In the last video, we have seen what are coordination compounds and how they can be distinguished from the double salts. We have also seen what is the central metal atom, the ligand, what is complex ion and coordination compounds. In this video, we will see what are various types of ligands in detail. Let's start the video. When we see various types of ligands, first we need to see what is the definition of a ligand. The molecule or ions which are coordinated to the central metal atom or ion in a coordination compounds are called as ligands. These ligands could be a molecules like carbon monoxide, ammonia, cyanide or water molecule or they could be ions such as chloride, bromide, iodide. So whether these are molecules or ions, every type of ligand has some donor atoms. For example, in carbon monoxide, uh, carbon is one of the donor atom or oxygen could be also a donor atom. In NH3, nitrogen is the donor atom. So depending upon the number of donor atoms, they are further classified as monodentate or polydentate ligands. Let's see what are monodentate ligands. As the name says mono, mono means one. They are also called as unidentate ligands. That means they have only one point of attachment to the central metal atom. These monodentate ligands could be a neutral ligands, negative ligands or positive ligands. Let's start with the neutral ligands. The examples for the neutral ligands are hydrazine. The second example is methylamine. Third is triethylamine. As we can see, there is only one nitrogen atom which has a lone pair of electrons on it and it can be donated to the central metal atom. It is called as monodentate ligand. Next example is hydroxylamine, then dimethylamine, carbonyl, thiocarbonyl, water molecule. It is in IUPAC naming system. It is called as aqua or aqua amine. This is called as triphenylphosphine, triethylphosphine. As in the case of phenyl group, we have replaced it with ethyl groups. It is called as triethylphosphine. Then this is called as dioxygen, similarly dinitrogen, phosphorus trifluoride, this is called as pyridine, next is nitrosyl, acetonitrile and finally we have thionitrosyl. These all molecules are neutral in charge that means they don't have positive or negative charge. These are called as neutral ligands. Let's move to the negative ligands. It indicates a negative charge on the ligands. First example is fluoride. In IUPAC naming system, it is called as fluoro. Similarly, chloro, bromo, iodo, hydrido, amido, imido, nitrido, hydroxoamido. In all these ligands, we can see a negative charge on an ion. These are called as negative ligands. Some more examples we can see like dimethyl amido, perhydroxo, oxo, hydroxo, peroxo, superoxo, mercapto, sulfido or thio, sulfito and lastly sulfato. When we have to study IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compounds, it is very important that we should know IUPAC names of specific ligands. Hence, we will see all the examples of negative ligands. The next example is carbonato. If this cyano group is attached to carbon, it is called as isocyano and if it is attached to nitrogen, it is called as cyano. Then we have thiosulfato, methoxo, ethoxo. Azido, nitro, nitrito, then we have nitrato, thiocyanato, isothiocyanato, acetato. We have seen neutral ligands, negative ligands, and now the next example is of positive ligands. There are very few positive ligands like hydrazinium ion, then nitrocilium, hydronium. 
there could be some free radicals also like methyl ethyl and so on these are all examples of monodentate ligands so these monodentate ligands are neutral in charge or they have negative charge or positive charge or they could be free radicals also let's move to the next type that is bidentate ligands as the name says bidentate that means they have two points of attachments in general the ligand molecule or ion which has two or more than two donor atoms or points of attachment and can be linked to the same metal in a complex or two more sites is called as polydentate or multidentate ligands let's start with the bidentate ligands all of us know that this is called as ethylene molecule from this ethylene molecule if one of the double bond is broken and two nh2 groups are attached now they have two donor sites two nitrogen atoms in two nh2 groups it is called as ethylene diamine similarly we can have ethylene diphosphine next example is we can take propylene and from propylene we can break the double bond we can attach two nh2 groups it results into 1,2 diaminopropane another example is an isomer of 1,2 diaminopropane is called as 1,3 diaminopropane let's take another example butylene from this butylene we will break a double bond and it will result into an another example butylene diamine from butylene the two hydrogen atoms could be replaced by another two methyl groups it results into tetramethylethylene now we will break the double bond it turns into an another ligand tetramethylethylene diamine let's move to the some more examples of bidentate ligands this is called as hydrazine this example we have also seen in the case of monodentate ligands if both the nitrogen atoms are attached to the central metal atom it act as a bidentate ligand similarly 222 bipyridine then we can have orthophenantholine or 110 phenantholine as we can see there are two donor atoms so these donor atoms can donate a lone pair of electron to the central metal atom it acts as a bidentate ligand let's synthesize another ligand if this molecule loses one of the hydrogen atoms from oh group it results into acetyl acetonitro ion it is a very important bidentate ligand as it can attach to this oxygen or it can be attached through this oxygen similarly if the methyl group is replaced by phenyl group over here it results into a benzyl acetonitro ion let's understand the structure of some more bidentate ligands as we all know this is oxalic acid if this oxalic acid loses two hydrogen atoms from the oh groups it results into an oxalato ion c2o42 minus it's a very good example of a bidentate ligand and it is used in various reactions next example is from 8 hydroxy quinoline it loses one of the hydrogen atom and results into 8 hydroxy quinylenoto ion or simply it is also called as oxine ligand this is called as dimethyl glyoxime as we can see that this group is called as oxime o x i m e okay it is called as methyl oxime and such that there are two groups it is called as dimethyl glyoxime this molecule on losing one hydrogen atom from one of the hydroxyl group it results into a dimethyl glyoxime ion these are all examples of bidentate ligands let's move to tridentate ligands as the name says tridentate that means it has three donor atoms The first example is of triaminopropane. This is called as propane chain, and from this propane, three hydrogens are replaced by NH2 groups. It results into triaminopropane. Next example is of diethylene triamine. It is also called as diene. It has three points of attachments: one atom from here, one atom from here, and one atom from here. Next example is of terpredine. These are the examples of tridentate ligands which has three points of attachments. Let's move to tetradentate ligands. Now you must have followed. It will have four donor atoms. This is the example of triethylene tetramine, abbreviated as trine. Nitrilo triacetato ion. Another example is triamino triethylamine, or it is abbreviated as trine. as we are moving from monodentate to bidentate tridentate tetradentate and then we will see pentadentate and hexadentate ligands also as the number of donor atoms are getting increased in the ligands we are actually increasing the stability of a coordination compound 
because when the four donor atoms hold the central metal atom the stability of a coordination compound increases because as we compare to monodentate ligands a monodentate ligand has only one donor atom and it can hold the central metal atom through only one attachment but in case of tetradentate ligands it can hold the central metal atom with the four donor atoms so the complex stability will definitely increase let's move to the pentadentate ligands first example is tetraethylene pentamine or it is also called as tetraene second example that i am taking is ethylene diamine triacetate ion it has five points of attachments let's see these five points this is first second third fourth and fifth these are the five points of attachment through which it can hold the central metal atom let's move to the hexadentate ligands a famous example for hexadentate ligands is edda full form is ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion it has six points of attachments first second third fourth fifth and sixth through these six donor atoms it can hold the central metal atom more firmly and the complex is highly stable as the density of the ligand gets increased the stability of the complex also go on increasing let's move to the next example called as flexidentate ligands as the name says flexidentate that means they are flexible in getting attached to the central metal atom this carbonato atom can attach through one oxygen atom or it can be also attached through both the oxygen atoms that means this carbonato ion have a flexibility that is it can be attached to one oxygen atom or two oxygen atoms it is called as flexidentate ligands similar example is of nitrato sulfato for example in this case a sulfato ion is attached through two donor atoms that is two oxygen atoms whereas in the second example this sulfato group is attached through only one oxygen atom to the central metal atom cobalt just pay attention to the charges of the cobalt 3 plus and in the second case it is cobalt 2 plus as one of the donor atom has a negative charge over here therefore charge is balanced by decreasing the charge on the central metal atom these ligands have flexibility to attach to the central metal atom therefore they are called as flexidentate ligands let's move to the next type of ligands on the screen you can see different examples of the ligands these ligands are called as ambidentate ligands for example in the first case this nitrogen atom has the negative charge and in the second case the structure of the ligand is same but the negative charge is on the oxygen atom in the first case where the molecule is attached to nitrogen it is called as nitro group and in the second case where the molecule is attached to oxygen atom it is called as nitrito group the ligand that has two or more donor atoms as in this case it is nitrogen and oxygen but while forming a complex is only one donor atom at a given time is attached to the metal atom then they are called as ambidentate ligands the second example is of cyanato and isothiocyanato in case of cyanato it is attached through nitrogen atom where it has the negative charge on the nitrogen atom in the second case the negative charge is on the sulfur it is called as isothiocyanato group the third is cyano group and isocyano and the last one is thiosulfate to o ion that is the attachment is through oxygen and thiosulfate to s ion where the attachment is from this sulfur ion let's move to the last type which are called as bridge ligands as the name says bridge ligands they can act as a bridge between two metal atoms for example hydroxo oxo sulfato amido imido carbonato nitro cyano or dinitrogen these ligands can form bridge between the two metal atoms let's see an example for this bridge ligand in this case a hydroxo group is forming a bridge between two chromium atoms in the second case cyano group is forming a bridge between two nickel atoms therefore these ligands they can act as a bridge or they can form a bridge between two metal atoms these are called as bridge ligands here we have completed all the types of ligands which are involved in coordination chemistry in the next video we will see iupac nomenclature of coordination compounds if you like my video click on like do share and subscribe my channel if you want to mention something or ask something mention it in the comment box also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry
थैंक यू